I've been asked to talk about leadership. And you will ask me, what do you know about leadership, young as you are? And my response to you is going to say, I may not know leadership, but I've observed leadership from other people. They depend on the environment, the time, and the conditions you find yourself in to be able to respond in a particular fashion. And therefore, an example cannot be used as a description or a definition of a principle. I've had a very good experience with a person that some of us don't even think about at any point in time. But this was a prominent person who at a particular point in time I almost said found himself with me in the same room. But it's the other way around. I found myself with him in the same room. And it so happened that I was the only non-politician, only non-minister of finance, only non-head of state. This was Tony Blair. Tony Blair is disliked by a lot of people. And in particular, disliked in the Middle East. Because of this, his alignment with the Americans at a particular point in time. But in that once-off experience that I had with Tony Blair, he was a hero to me. Because in that meeting, despite the fact that I was just a mere official from a small government of South Africa, he treated me like a head of state. And my impression of, he, of, of, of Tony Blair from that day onwards was a characterization of a very good leader, a leader that is sensitive to circumstances around him. And a leader is not somebody who's senior to you. A leader can actually be a junior. And this is why they say, some of the best leaders have done it from behind. You don't see them, you don't hear them, but they influence you unknowingly. And effectively, what we find is that what comes out of those leaders, because we cannot paint it with a particular brush, we cannot align it to a particular ideology, it tends to stick more than that leadership that comes from somebody that you know. Because today, you believe this person, you trust him, therefore you accept his view of the world. Tomorrow, you start disliking that person. All of a sudden, your view of him as a good leader changes. It's a, it's a person that exhibits good values, honesty, aims to do right all the time, stay fair, and consistent. The operative term here is aims. Has the right intent. I'm going to come back to that at a later stage. Seven, surrounds himself with smart people. And if you've already agreed that you can't do everything yourself, to sleep better at night, you need to have smart people around. If you don't, you will not sleep at night because you'll be worried about disasters every morning you wake up. That's a good one. Eight, delegates and empowers. Nine, educates and develops. Ten, takes charge. Eleven, accepts responsibility. When things go wrong, you don't say, my staff did it. I am responsible. Twelve, shows confidence. 13, not emotional. 14, does not threaten or intimidate. 15, handles loneliness of the command role. 16, do you all understand what that means? Okay, those who don't understand. There's a phrase that goes, it is cold on top. 
And that phrase is true. And if you are not comfortable managing that responsibility, the likelihood is you're going to be jittery at every stage of your management. Because you're alone there, you need to make decisions on your own. And even if somebody, a sweeper, makes a decision, and it's a wrong decision, it's still your decision. Because you've delegated powers to everybody. And anything that goes right, you take the accolades. So, if anything goes wrong, you should also take the penalty. That's what a leader is about. However, we do have leaders that pick and choose the things that they want to take responsibility for. Then 16, not the best tactician, but understands the business and understands where the business is going to. 17, knows when to leave. <laughs> Not a single person can be an embodiment of all these over an extended period of time. You may be an embodiment at one point of your life and that will be a unique point of your life and that will be it. All other parts of your life will lack a lot. And that means, as leaders, we can never be perfect. In conclusion, I would like to leave you with a very simple statement. You already know it. But when it is said, it feels new every time it is said. And this statement is, there is no best leadership style. Just be yourself. I think.